Hey guys, welcome back to another Skyrim console mod video. Today I'm going to be changing it up a bit and cutting back the Xbox One mod videos from 10 mods to 5. It was fun while it lasted, but ultimately it's too many mods to keep up with every single day. So I'm still going to have two videos, one for PS4 and one for Xbox One. It does mean for the 5 mods I show however, that I can go a bit more into detail for each of them. Something I wanted to try out, and to do that the videos will be a bit more laid back, usually the mods are rushed to get through them as many as possible, but I'm not enjoying doing them that way uh, that much anyway, because I don't really get time to enjoy the mods myself, as I have to cover so many. Either way, you will like the change or not, but I think going forward this will be the way that I cover them from now on. Anyways, that was a bit of a longer intro, but it was something I wanted to tell you guys before you watched today's video. As always, I rely on your feedback, so let me know what you think of the video in the comments, and we can jump straight to our first mod. I wanted to start off with something a bit simple to start with because we have some mods in this video that are quite big, so I thought I would start off with a new armor mod. I chose this one as it's simply the most downloaded armor from the past 24 hours, and I thought I would showcase it to you guys. Although I needed a female armor for a companion mod you will see later in the video anyway, and this one was perfect for that. So what does this mod do? Well it adds in the Triss and Yen for armors from The Witcher 3 into the game. If you're playing a male character, the male version of the mod is also available to download and that is separate. So what you get with this mod, you get the Trish standard outfit, complete with amulet, boots, gloves, circlet, and of course the outfit itself. You also get the Trish DLC outfit, which comes with all the same things as the other outfit, which looks amazing by the way. The gloves, the boots, the pendant, and the circlet. This is personally my favourite one, as it goes well with my look and my sword of course. You also get the Yennefer outfit, again which comes with the outfit and all the jewellery to match. It's good looking this one, even if it does make you look like a member of the Night's Watch. And you also get the DLC version, which is similar but comes with an open leg kind of look. Let's not forget that these are actually armours, and they're pretty good. They're on par in damage resistance to the Elven Light armours. It also works with the Seraphim female body replacer if you have that installed. And don't forget you can mix and match any of the outfits with each other. Overall they're a really cool mod, not just if you're a fan of The Witcher 3, as all armors are really awesome looking, and despite looking like ordinary clothing, they are armors and they offer decent damage resistance for your character as well. Next up we have True Storm Special Edition, Rain, Thunder and Weather Redone by Fading Signal. Voted in the top 10 mods of the year from 2015 on PC, and for good reason, and it's now available for consoles as well. Yesterday we covered the Vivid Weathers mod, which while both these mods do have similarities, there's just something I like personally better about the True Storms, and that reason is that the mod only focuses on storms and adds them into the game. It doesn't really alter things like the lighting for example, which the Vivid Weathers mod does. And personally I'm not too keen on those changes. In Fallout 4, I used Vivid Weathers for a long time, but ultimately True Storms was better for me and I switched. Unfortunately, none of these weather overhaul mods are available for PS4, one of the bigger mods you guys will miss out on, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Well, let's take a look at what this mod actually does. The mod overhauls all the weathers in the game and adds in a whole bunch of different light, heavy and unique weathers into the vanilla game and its effects are quite dramatic. It gives the entire game a far more immersive and very different atmosphere than you get in the original game. On top of that new weathers and new sound effects have been added like improved thunder sounds and more realistic rain sounds. New particle effects have also been added along with an overhaul to the rain, snow and dust textures to make them all feel more realistic and dynamic. As we mentioned above you get two variations of each new storm type, meaning that for example, if it's snowing you get a light pleasant snowfall, if it's heavy you get a hazardous looking blizzard. Overall True Storms is for me the best and by far most dynamic weather overhaul mod for Skyrim. It adds in all the cool weathers and storms that make the game look awesome by the way, but it doesn't affect the lighting, it doesn't change the way clear weather looks, and other small changes that I really think that vivid weather does change and I'm not too keen on them. If you're planning to install it, this mod doesn't really work with other weather overhauls, but you can still try and install them anyway, but make sure that you put the vivid weathers below the other weather mods in your load order. Also this one goes quite well with the Darker Nights mod, I will link that one in the description below if you haven't already seen it. A quick note, all the footage you see is recorded by me on Xbox One, so what you see in the game is actually how yours will look when you install it. So guys, this is one mod I strongly suggest you try it for yourself, since it's a very nice mod. And speaking of nice mods, our next one is a very cool one, and that is the Skyfall Manor by LD50365. A very nice and very lore friendly estate I have to say, it fits really well with the rest of the game, and it looks like it's part of Whiterun, which is exactly where you'll find this home. 
It doesn't mention in the description whether this estate is actually named after a Skyfall estate from James Bond, but I think it has some similarities on the outside to it, but you guys can let me know what you think in the comments. Now I have to say that the outside of this house is awesome, the stone bridge over the stream, the house itself is really really cool looking, and it only cost a low price of 10,000 gold septums, which isn't too pricey for a medium to large house. So let's take a look at what you get for your 10,000 gold. The house itself is awesome and worth the money, just for the way it looks. On the outside you get this cool porch that has plenty of storage, chests, seating and planters. You even get your own merchant called Olivia, who currently has a face bug at the minute. She's just an all round trader that sells a bit of everything. Inside you open up to this very large open planned entranceway. Wooden pillars, hanging plants and open balconies make it look very impressive. So what is actually in this house? Well, you get a very large spacious dining room with large table and plenty of shelves and storage. Don't forget you get plenty of wine as well. A cozy sitting room complete with fireplace and bearskin rug. A large open kitchen with oven, cooking pot and sink along with plenty of food to go around. Upstairs is a very nice open plan design complete with enchanting and alchemy stations and even a small office area. You have not one, not two, but three bedrooms with a total of seven beds with storage, weapon racks and shelves for everyone. The master bedroom even has a fireplace. And the bathroom is probably the best part of the house, it comes with both a bath and a shower. Downstairs you have more enchanting, crafting and alchemy spaces. Enough weapon racks, mannequins and cabinets to source a small army, along with a room to keep all your best stuff in. Two servant quarters containing another 12 beds. And if all that wasn't enough, if we head downstairs again, to a final room, you can also access this by going in the trap door from the outside. It has everything you can need down here, including more kitchen space, more sitting areas, and another bathroom, along with 34 more beds. So a really cool house, and definitely one worth downloading. So that brings us to our third mod, and yes you guessed it, it's a new follower or companion, but before we take a look at it I want to let you guys know if you don't already, that the increased follower limit mod is out now, so you can recruit up to 100 companions at once and maybe fill up some of those beds in the Skyfall manner. However, if you're looking for a really cool companion, then this next mod is exactly that. Sophia is a very awesome and immersive companion mod by John Jarvis. Sophia is a fully voiced, immersive and very lovable follower and companion and is the most downloaded companion mod in Skyrim. She is a very awesome companion mod that requires you to put some effort into, unlike some other companions in the game. To start off you find her in Whiterun stable and she doesn't have any clothes so you have to provide them for her. It's clear from the first dialogue you have with Sophia, she's no ordinary companion. The author gives up a bit of insight into her in the mod description and it says, Sophia is quite an unusual follower. She is tough, witty and just a little bit boastful. She has a strong fondness for player characters, but her deliberate attempts to disguise this fact just leads to very awkward conversations, especially as she usually says exactly what she thinks. Sophia is a tease and loves to wind people up, which doesn't make her very popular with people. Her rebellious spirit and careless attitude often get her in trouble, not to mention her consistent inappropriate comments which easily offend or embarrass people. The mod is very detailed compared to a lot of other mods, and a lot of effort has went into making Sophia very much immersive as possible. She can ride horses, sing, and complete complex dialogue with the player. She also comes with a leveling system, so it feels as if though she is growing stronger over time, which is a nice detail, and this is also part of her marriage requirements. Both females and males can marry Sophia. To marry her, you need to do the following things. Get 100 kills, clear 5 dungeons, spend 30 days with her, as well as get her relationship level to 100 by giving her gifts and talking to her regularly. You can check your relationship status with her by simply talking to her. Unlike other companions, you actually have to work at your relationship with her to get the most out of her. So there's no more immersive companion mod out there than this one, so it's definitely worth a download. Our final mod, Whiterun Merchants Remastered, is a complete overhaul to all the merchants in Whiterun by Spock Rates. The mod changes the look and feel of all four of the big merchants in Whiterun, revamping them and giving them all the more realistic and immersive settings. So if you're someone that isn't happy with the way Whiterun merchants are currently, then this mod is definitely for you. Each merchant has been revamped and now contains a new layout and an atmosphere to make them feel better and more unique. Chest and storage have been added to each with stuff in them to make them feel as though the shops are full rather than the merchants carrying everything around with them. Crafting stations and weapon displays have also been included to add to the immersion. The merchants inventories have also been upgraded so they sell better and a wider range of stuff. Finally, all of these items can be stolen from the vendors to help you increase your thievery and sneak skills. After all, vendors are probably the best place to steal from in real life, but the game not so much. So overall, a really fun immersive mod that overhauls all the vendors in Whiterun, 
to make them more real and immersive. And this mod is only part of a series of future vendor updates to other cities, so look out for those in the future. Well guys, there we have it, 5 brand new mods you can download right now for Xbox One in Skyrim Special Edition. Let me know what you thought of this video, as your feedback is very much appreciated, and we don't get through as many mods per day, but I feel as though we get to explore what the 5 mods we do cover are more about in depth. Look out later today for a similar video, but all the mods in that video will be also available for PlayStation 4, along with the Xbox One. As always guys, like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you all later. See you all then.